All right, welcome back. Now, one week after the shootings at Lekki Toll Plaza, the controversy over the incident is still raging. This time, the human rights group Amnesty International is calling on the federal government to bring to justice those behind the shooting incident. The rights group, in its second report on the incident, is also saying the government must stop attempts to cover up the incident. In his last report, which details a timeline of events from when the NSAS protest started on October 8, the group says, based on its investigations, the peaceful protest had been peaceful until they were met by excessive use of force by the army and the police. According to Amnesty, things came to a head on October 20, after peaceful protesters were reportedly shot dead when the Nigerian army opened fire on them at the Lekki toll gate. The group says it's on the ground. It's on the ground investigation confirmed that 12 persons were killed at the Alausa and Lekki venues of the protest by the Nigerian army and the police. Specifically, for Lekki, Amnesty says it is in possession of a video which details the movement of the military from Boni camp passing along Zumbambadi way and several foreign embassies and consulates before arriving at the Lekki Toll Plaza where the shootings occurred. Amnesty says the entire journey lasted seven minutes and clearly shows the vehicles which appear to be the ones used by the Nigerian military and the police. The army, of course, has broken its silence on the incident at Lekki. Uh, on October 20, saying that it was invited by the Lagos State Government to enforce the curfew and restore order, and at no time did the soldiers shoot protesters. Well, more on this this morning. We have the essay to the President of Media and Publicity, Mr. Femi Adishino, joining us to have a conversation. Thank you so much for your time uh, this morning. Well, in, in the wake of all of these, aftermath of the NSAS protests and this latest one from Amnesty International. What's government's position? Thank you. Good morning. I'll say government's position remains the same. The issue is being investigated. There is a pro panel set up by the Lagos State Government and until that panel comes up with its report any other thing will be premature. So, uh, government, particularly federal government, and particularly the presidency, will be the last bus stop. The buck stops at that table. So if the presidency now begins to make comment at this time, it is pre prejudicial, it is premature. So the government is not going to simultaneously set up any you know, investigative panel, because, I mean, the governor of Lagos said it himself, uh, he is not in charge of the armed forces. Everybody knows that. So people are actually looking to the federal government to take the lead, as a matter of fact, or play a huge role simultaneously. Uh, well, it, it depends on the understanding of the Constitution by those who expect a judicial panel or anything like that from federal government. The truth is that under the Constitution, the federal government cannot set up any judicial panel anywhere except in Abuja. Only state governments can set up judicial panels in their jurisdiction. The federal government cannot. So it doesn't even matter that uh, ministers, some ministers, who, of course, work with the federal government, uh, paid visits to the, especially some parts of Lagos and a number of other governors did, but specifically the fact that ministers paid a visit. Doesn't it matter that at least maybe that should give some reflection of the extent to which things have gone and some action would be expected from the presidency consequently? You need to properly situate that visit. At the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting nine days ago, the president directed all ministers to return to their states. He said constitutionally, the ministers are the ones that represent their states 
in the cabinet and in the federal government. So they should return to their respective states, engage with the governors and engage with the people so that there can be a better understanding of what is happening in the country. That is the background to that visit you are talking about. It was at the instance of the president and of the federal government. Presidency has taken some action. What are we to expect as a result of that visit? Yesterday, I can tell you, because there was another Federal Executive Council meeting yesterday, and the President asked for briefs from the ministers who went out. Only two had, uh, had their reports ready as of yesterday because some others were still in their respective states, still carrying out uh, the assignment. So, the President said, all of them should turn in their reports through the Secretary to the Government of the Federation in the incoming week. And what are we to expect uh, in terms of action as a result of um, those reports? Well, it can only be positive. One, it will help us to establish the truth to some things. Because there, there are lots of conjectures, there are lots of colorations, outright falsehood, fake news, and all that. The ministers can come with what is near authentic based on the consultations they are going to make. Well, one of the questions a number of people have asked over and over again is what will happen should there be an indictment of any soldier um, in the shootings that, that is being reported at Lekki? What is the likely consequence? Because some people believe that as commander-in-chief of the armed forces, as you said, the box stops at the president's table. So if it happens to be proven that indeed there were shootings, which many believe there have been, Amnesty International says there were 12 fatalities, what are the likely consequences? You are asking me to look into the seeds of time and determine which seed will grow and which will not, which is not possible. We don't begin to surmise on something as crucial and important as that. Rather, we wait until there's a report, and then we'll see what happens. We, we, we don't begin to conjecture on mm. something as very, very important as this. Well, Mr. Arishino, in 1993, in the wake of the 1993 uh, fracas, you were a practicing journalist along with several others who were expecting some action based on things that they saw, they heard, and they reported. Consequently, they, of course, as a journalist, many conjectures were made, and... All of that is in the, it's in the time of history now, in, in, in the space of history now. So I don't think it's out of place for me to expect you to look into that, whatever it is I said I should look at now. So please go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. This is, this is an issue that has attracted national and international attention. You dare not handle it with flippancy or levity. You have to uh, ensure that whatever you say, is based on fact. There are allegations. Anybody can make allegations. But we need to establish what is the truth. And it is when that truth is established that you can then make, make comments. Anything you say before the fact is established is just mere conjecture and is not good for the process. Because, I mean, part of the questions on, on people, questions people are asking is, who ordered shootings at that point because now videos several clips have emerged yes we know there are panels being set up to look into those things but they consistently keep reminding the nation the cnc has a huge role so if it turns out that people went there and shot even if they were invited by a, a sub-national leader can they actually go there and open fire without the CNC is signing off. They just say, like, look, this doesn't look good. And yes, we're not trying to preempt what the outcome will be. But looking at the handling of all of this, there will be huge questions on the commander in chief. Don't you think so? The, the, it will still be preemptive to say anything now. The commander in chief will act based on facts and evidences and information garnered from the pro panels, not allegations, which could be wild, which could be unfounded. The CEC will act based on information that is verified, that is genuine. 
then you can expect him to do something. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that happened, which they're investigating now. The military got the shots were fired. Did the president sign off in letting the military join forces with some authorities? But this time, the, the, the reports say indicate that they were alone at that point. Was it aware that they were going to go to such a place at the time? Yeah, that, that, that wouldn't be my brief, really. You have heard the military authorities speak on it. They are the ones competent to speak on that matter, not me. No, but yes, the president is the commander in chief. So the military cannot unilaterally take any action without the president's clearance, can they? Yes, and the, the defense headquarters has addressed this issue. It would just be proper if you will take it up with a defense spokesman. Because that's outside my brief, and I will be pontificating if I say anything on it. Okay, because I mean, we thought as presidential spokesperson, you will have information on almost anything, <laughs> you know, that, that we can always ask. Yes, I speak, I, speak, I, I speak on what the president himself is aware of. It's in, his, it's in his custody, and he has made available to us that work with him. I don't speak on what has not been available to the president. Okay, because, well, I, I, I'm a little confused. Is it that he, he's not aware of what, of this, or he hasn't made it available to you? You are setting a trap there, and I won't no. fall into it. No, you no, can't no, say no, no, no. You are preempting <laughs> me now. Now you're the one preempting me. I'm, not, I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking a question. You said we shouldn't preempt you, so don't do the same thing to us. It's just a question. No. A, a, a president is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the country. He is aware of more than you can think because he has a helicopter view of what is happening in the country. He has security reports. But things must be investigated and verified before he takes certain decisions. Was he aware that soldiers were going to go to Lekki, going by what you just said now? The, 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 answer, the question I've answered is what we have asked in another way. Uh, the president is commander-in-chief of the armed forces. He is aware of a lot of things in the country. But whether he's aware of this specifically or not, ask the military authorities. Okay, well, um, let's uh, take a look at a few other issues along this line. Well, one of the things that I've broken out as a result of this whole thing is these lootings. And I want to believe that you are as concerned. I mean, you... Again, let me refer you to 27 years ago. You saw all that happened at that time. Well, it was the military government and, the, and it was a fight for democracy. And there was a lot of fracas at the time, a lot of unrest, a lot of protesting, a lot of rioting as a result of what the government of the day did. And a lot of things happened at that time. Part of it led to the Fourth Republic. Now we are having lootings again. And I'm pretty sure you are as concerned. It speaks to only one thing. Um, our previous guest said the other time, said a hungry man is an angry man. I and mean, it's something that you are also aware of. Would you say, indeed, that it's a true reflection of the people's anger and hunger? I wouldn't agree completely with that. Because criminality is criminality. Would you justify armed robbery because the man was poor? Would you justify armed robbery because the man didn't have money? Just as you can't justify armed robbery because a man was poor and then he took a gun to rob another person, you can also justify the lootings that are going on. It's pure criminality. Mind you, it's not everybody engaged in that looting that is hungry. That is the truth. It is just greed and pure criminality. Yeah, but, but Mr. Dishonor, if, um, because I mean, time and again, we hear different authorities talk about the plans they're putting in place, the figures they are working with to uh, deal or address the question of poverty. But those images that were in different parts of the country speak volumes. And then the World Poverty Clock, uh, which 
Yes, the government has a plan to bring 100 million people out of poverty, but can we actually run away from the fact that we have a huge problem on our hands? That, look, all of those people, it's a huge question. So in measuring, isn't that perhaps uh, a yardstick, or perhaps government should look at those and then reflect on all the policies they say they've been executing. Are they achieving the purpose, having seen all of those on the streets? Yeah, thank you. Criminality will always be criminality. And anarchy, or near anarchy, promotes criminality. What has happened in the past two or three weeks or thereabout led to what is happening now. If there was cohesion and tranquility in society, this wouldn't happen. Therefore, it is corollary to the near anarchic situation that came on the country because of the protests. If you didn't have people burning police stations, killing policemen, burning private and public property, you wouldn't have this fate of looting. That means those same people will be in society and they will find ways to eke out a living. But because a situation was created for near anarchy, that is why you have this. So I don't agree that it is all about poverty. Yes, in any country, you will have, at any given time, people who are poor, people who are hungry, and that is one of the reasons why you have government to ensure that the number of the poor and the hungry reduce progressively. That will happen in every country. But at any given time, the poor and the hungry will be there. And government has a duty to ensure that their number reduces. So this crowd of people that you see going to loot are not necessarily hungry and angry. They are taking advantage of the collapse of law and order that came as a result of protracted protests. Well, Mr. Adishino, um, if you would um, back up a little. The protests yeah. were peaceful hitherto. The, the one that you are referring to right now were peaceful, peaceful hitherto until the introduction of the military and the shootings. It wasn't the protests that gave birth to these things that we're seeing. It was the fact that the military came with a high hand, so to speak. That's the way some people believe it, it, it panned out. So it wasn't because of the protests, which many people, perhaps even you as well, have applauded as being peaceful hitherto. But when the military came in and shootings came up, then the people were stoked, so to speak, and then this began to happen. Then all of the, you know, brigand day began and all of that, you know, that we have seen that, that happened. The anger pretty much got to a head. Do you still want to say that this is not a reflection? No. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are not quite, you are not quite correct. You are falling for the narrative of Amnesty International. And Amnesty is wrong. Mr. Adeshino. Anarchy had broken loose before even Lekki. The prisons in Bini and Oku had been broken open before Lekki. Orile police station had been burned before Lekki. Many policemen had been born before Lekki. So you can't say that it was Lekki that precipitated all those things. Look at the timelines. Check when those things happened. You will see that they had happened before Lekki. So you are falling for the gambit of Amnesty International. Amnesty International does not have all the facts. They don't run this country. They shouldn't know be, be beyond what they have been told. They shouldn't know beyond what you and I can know as media people and as watchers of developments. Mm. Certain things, criminal in nature, had happened before Lekki. So you can't say Lekki precipitated it. It's not quite right. So is it the government's thinking that uh, amnesty is wrong and they'll approach it from that perspective? I, I, I am not to give you government thinking. Amnesty had always okay, come up with thinking. reports that is it the president's are unsubstantiated thinking? about Nigeria. What about, is it the president's thinking? The many, times, many, many times the military had come out to even dispute facts brought forward by amnesty. Amnesty should do its job, but it is the duty of Nigeria and Nigerians to look at 
the information they have brought to see whether they are justifiable or they are not. Okay, um, there is uh, uh, a, me a message that we received, just to bring it in before we close, even though we could follow up on some of the things you've mentioned. Uh, the youth, uh, they should say they don't know leader, but in the communication that is circulating out there, they say they reject Professor Yami Oshimbajole committee to address the national issues raised by NSAS movements and the protests due to what they say um, and without prejudice for they see a lack of sincerity of purpose and desired credibility on the part of the government. They don't want the VP to head any committee. They say they want the president to lead the decisions and the discussions. Well, I'm not privy to that uh, information yet. I, I had it for the first time just now. And um, if that's a, a position, I, I'm sure government will look at it and come out with his response to that. I'm, I'm not aware of that report yet. And part of what they also say, uh, hopefully when you do see that, they are asking for inclusion of uh, uh, former president, uh, General Yakubu Gawan. They talk about uh, Abdul Salami Abubakar. They talk about uh, 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 former president Goodluck Jonathan, former president Obasanjo, to be in those committees to, to discuss and negotiate with them before they then rep choose their own representatives who will then be on the table to discuss those issues? Well, um, I'm sure that those proposals will be considered. But one thing I would like to stress is that the issues we have had in the past three weeks will only be settled conclusively through dialogue and negotiation. That was a window they missed. If they opt for that window now, it will just be very good for everybody. Mm. Very good for the country, very good for government, very good for government, very good for business, good for everything. Because at the end of the day, street protests can only be disruptive, disruptive to the lives of everyone. Mr. Adishino, take a look at this um, world poverty clock. I'm, I'm sure you are aware of it. Uh, this is what is on now as far as the world poverty clock is concerned. And um, if you look at those figures, that is what it is saying about Nigeria. More than 105 million people already. And government is saying, we're well, gonna take 100 million people out of poverty over 10 years. By that time, we're likely to have so many more people, you know, uh, in the poverty bracket. How quickly do you see this happening? Because many people opine that if we are able to reduce the rate of poverty in several states, what we found on the streets, the lootings and all, will be greatly um, dissipated. I, I, I'd like to say that the world poverty clock is a accumulation of 60 years of missed opportunities 60 years of frittered opportunities, 60 years of stolen wealth, 60 years. And you don't expect that that will be reversed in a year or two. And then taking 100 million out of poverty in 10 years, the Buhari administration has just about two and a half years to go. So it tells you that it's not going to be the duty of one administration. It is going to be a progressive thing. The administration that comes needs to continue with it before that can be achieved. It's just a program for the country and is in the interest of everyone, government and the people, if that program is continued. But the Buhari okay. administration will, will do its level best in the time remaining. Well, we have to thank you very much, Mr. Femi Adishino, essay to the president on media and publicity. Thank you so much for your time and thoughts. My, my pleasure. Thank you. Right, we're back in a moment to take on one other issue. Please stay with us.